Well, thank you for having me. It's uh, been a long time since I've given my testimony. And I'm sure you have all heard William's testimony. I'd just like to, to start off uh, just to make clear that I am William's younger brother. <laughs> as we tell you. You know, but, uh, I'd just like to, to say that I'm the youngest of, of the family, the youngest of six. I have three girls and three boys with my mum and dad had. And we grew up in a, a council estate where, again, when you were being called for dinner, you were called by name, William, Tina, Kenneth, Jack, Lee, and Andrew Gordon. And we were scared to shoot just dinner because anybody would come around. So we would just have the, the whole estate around. You know, so we grew up in a, a home with uh, a six children, a big family, and we all uh, decided sometimes, what William had said, now is that a nightmare of having a lot of children running about. Um, sure, it drove my, my mum and dad crazy, but to say, uh, my mum would say that she would have uh, her man to put the cattle on uh, because every two weeks I would have been in pain and we didn't know what was uh, causing the pain, but the pain seemed to stop when my ears leaked. So at the age of nine, that's how long it took before they found out actually what was wrong with my ears. Um, I had cysts in the ears. It was, again, impairing, impairing my hearing. Um, I went in and had the bones removed from the ear and the cysts took out. Um, but the fact that my speech and sometimes my learning was what I'd probably say to me dyslexia, reading and, and writing would be sort of a, a, a difficult uh, thing for me. Even sometimes when you grow up down right, you look at it and it's completely wrong. Uh, that's just the way that I perceived it. But I thank God that uh, my mother would send us to Sunday school, as, as was mentioned in uh, Ian and William's testimony, that there was a wee couple that came up and we knew them as Auntie Anne and Uncle Jackie. Um, they were actually from John Max. And we went to Sunday school and we were always sent to the Sunday school, you know, uh, being born obviously in the, the 80s, early 90s, you were in that era where you were always sent out to Sunday school, you weren't really given a choice, you were go to Sunday school with your brothers and sisters and all the other kids in the street. Um, today, we know that kids would rather sit and play their, their Playstations and Xboxes. And it's a... Uh, it's sort of uh, sad to say that, uh, that kids aren't really made to go to the church and to say we, we were always sent having a, a mother who was, was saved. You know, we could see now that she cared for us uh, enough to send us to Sunday school to hear the word of God. Um, it was just a, a, a wee verse that I'd like to, to bring you to. So, just in uh, Ephesians chapter 6. Bring them up in the future and upon abundance of the Lord. I think you know, right? And to say we had a, a mother who was saved, so again we could see that she cared for us to, to be able to send us to Sunday school, like any mother would care for her children to send them out to learn the word of God. And we always, to say, always had a belief in God and that there was a God. And as I get up until uh, my teenage years going, or should I say, going to secondary school to 11, I started to fall into people which were, again, 
money, drugs, um, that way you stay where you fought that, that that's the path that you, you should be taking, even though that you were doing the same things as what they were doing, drinking and, and drugging. So, uh, I always managed to speak about God, and I always believed that there was a God, and some of my friends never did. And to me, talking to God with them, and I fancy at some point they would say to me that they believed there was a God also, but we were never, you know, I was never saved. Having a belief in, in God never saved me. So, just uh, the, the night that I, I got saved was a very, uh, a very strange night for, for me that William had, had not long been saved and my brother Kenneth was once again in the profession and there's been many times that he has been with the Lord and away from the Lord and you know, he needs much prayer that the Lord will have uh, his way in his life and I was staying with my brother Kenneth that night and it was one of the times that he had professed to be saved and I was just I went back to bed and I was lying in bed and the Lord had said to me Gordon if you were to die this night where would you be? and the only answer I could give was hell because I knew where I was going I knew what I was destined for and that's when I realised that I needed to repent I, I needed to, to get myself right with the Lord and I, I was actually that scared that I actually kneeled on top of my bed and prayed and asked the Lord and cried to the Lord save me and the very next day, two of my friends had come round. Um, my brother Kenneth had said to me, Gordon, you have to tell them that you're, you're saved. Because they were looking to go back out and, and do what we were doing, drinking and, and smoking cannabis. And I had to say to them, was, you know, I've got saved, I didn't, you know, I didn't no longer go out with these. And they sort of, sort of left and at that. But for a time, I was still going down and sitting with them, but I used to always bring my Bible down and actually read scriptures to them for, for, for a while until a certain point where I had to, to keep myself separate for them, uh, from them. So once I, I got saved to say, being from a, a big family, I, I wanted to, to have a wife and I wanted to get married and, and have a family. And I prayed and asked the Lord and uh, give me a, a wife. And again, it says in, in Proverbs uh, eighteen twenty two, he who findeth a wife findeth a good thing. <coughs> and uh, I prayed and I ended up meeting Sarah. Um, after a year of, of faith, we, we got married and decided to start a family. So, with a starting family. Overall, we we had uh, seven miscarriages, and uh, we still born eighteen weeks. And um, after the first miscarriage, uh, again we we just said, you know, it was the, the Lord had wanted it to be, and we put our faith and trust in the Lord. And the, the second pregnancy was the, the we still born. Uh, we named him Joshua, but we ended up having to go over to Glasgow because here didn't do inductions to river so because Joshua's abdominal wall hadn't developed his internal organs were uh, it sounds better so we were saying that there would be a danger to to life um, again uh, at the time when they, they told us that at the start that they didn't know what it was first you know we were praying and asking the Lord that it would be something that you know that the doctors could fix and we ended up uh, uh you know we found out that it was that he had no abdominal wall and his internal organs were it sounds better so going to, to glasgow and, and uh sarah had to, to give birth and again you know, i'm doing my best to try to stay strong for for sarah as well and you know it was only the lord that, that got us through it and i don't know what we would have done if we didn't have the lord and again you know, satan wants to tempt you with drink and the past and drink and drugs to try to drown your worries and in, in the world and 
Now, I believe that the Lord uh, you know, led me through it by just His His will. And again, the first that I could draw comfort from was in Second Samuel, where David had says that he could no longer he could bring the child back to him, but he would go to the child. So that first brought us a uh, comfort. And then when we did have our first uh, different child, Job, we called him Job Joshua, Joshua after the, the, the child. Um, at a couple of years old, we knew that Job wasn't uh, developing quickly as he had some family member delays. Um, found out that he had autism, um, Michael Deleson syndrome which was a part of the, the chromosome missing. So any child that we would have after that, they give us a 50-50 chance of having the same chromosome disorder. So we have our oldest child, Gordon, um, you know, named after his, for his daddy's sake. Um, again, having two autistic children, you know, I have heard people saying about them being a, a burden, but they're they're not a burden, they're, they're hard, mm. hard uh, to deal with, but we thank the Lord for them. Mm. And the Lord has done so much for us by helping us with the children. I mean, uh, Job can walk and he, he can take himself to the toilet, and sometimes it's even just the, the simplest things of having a child that can bring himself to the toilet. Um, we know that he still has his, his difficulties. Gordon can feed himself, and you know, we thank the Lord that. They do have little things that we say some people maybe take for granted. Um, we can see God's hand in it. And, you know, I don't really know what to say about that, about the children. You know, it has been a miracle to ask God for children and we got them. Um, he's given us patience and strength to, to deal with them on a, a daily uh, basis. Um, it is hard each day. To, to look after them because you don't know what a day may bring, but we know we can go for tomorrow, and that's, that's the Lord. And again, that, that's where we have to put our, our faith and our, our trust in. It's the Lord that He will guide us each day through it. So, again, the, the Lord just kept me every day, and that, that's all I, I can say that I have just put my faith and trust through everything that has happened in my life. Um, you know, we, we can see that, that today it is so hard for people to, to come and um, people sort of want to argue with you straight away when you mention the word even God. People hang up, you know, I have been in a workplace where people know that you're a believer and have, have challenged you, not because they want to know what you believe in, but because they think <coughs> that you're being funny. Um, again, it says about not casting your prayers on the feet of swine. Um, I have had opportunities to speak with people one on one, which is far better uh, to have that conversation and make a witness to, to people one on one. Uh, trying to speak to them in a crowd, even when you see mockers and, and, and scoffers. So, to say, you know, the Lord had says to his disciples and you know he wanted them to to follow his his direction and he wanted them to go out and spread the gospel. And I asked the Lord for every opportunity that I I have, you know, even being at the hospitals with Sarah having miscarriages and and being where the thing I've asked the Lord, Lord help me just to have a, a message to me even show my faith in you that even though suffering has been devastating in our lives that we can draw our strength and faith from you but i do thank the lord for the, the more and the power that we have had and that again uh, i've known of, of even fathers that have not wanted their kids to go to sunday school and even known that they even said i wouldn't send my children to sunday i don't want them to have anything to do with God and you know I thank the Lord that my father allowed my mother to, to send us to, to Sunday school and 
you know, it would be a joy to, to see uh, my father one day coming to know the Lord. And I do believe that we all have our, our free will, which we have to give unto God and accept. God will not force his way into anybody's life. It was only through the Holy Spirit and the opening of your understanding of needing to be saved that you can be saved. That says that no man comes to the Father, least the Father draws him. And I just like to, to give thanks that I can be up here and just share these things with you. And I'll just I'll finish with a, a wee chapter that, uh, that has brought a great, great comfort to, to me. It's in uh, John, it's John 13. chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Mm. And I do thank the, the Lord that there has been so many times I have asked the Lord for so many things. In times of trouble, that's where we all go to, we all go to our knees and we pray unto the Lord and cry upon the Lord to help us. As Peter walked on the water and began to sink, he cried, Lord, save me. And immediately the Lord plucked him out of the, the water. And again, it's the same as ourselves and our own lives, that once we take our eyes off the Lord, that's when we begin to sink. Mm -hmm. And just thank the Lord that I do have a, a testimony, and that I can share the gospel, and that I have seen fruit in my own life. I've seen fruit. In my, my family's lives, with mm -hmm. brothers and sisters being saved. And I just ask the Lord, may it continue for every believer mm -hmm. that they have loved ones and would love to see them come to know the Lord as their, their Lord and Savior. And I just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen.